Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about microservice communications, what all different ways in which microservices can communicate with one another and two basic approach we have is synchronous protocols and asynchronous. I mean synchronous way of communication and asynchronous way of communication. Synchronous service 1 and service 2 are making talking to one another on HTTP protocol. Now underlying implementation on service 2 can be a simple GraphQL, can be REST APIs, can be a SOAP based service. All that will happen on the HTTP and HTTPS and what is the new expectation is service 2 should be able to respond within the request timeout, right? So you will get a particular status code, message, data in this particular request from uh, service 2, okay? So they are bound with some particular contract. Service 1 will make a request like REST API call, HTTP get, put, post, delete. Service 2 will receive data from some data source, MySQL, MongoDB or some other database and it will respond to the service one. So this is the request and reply and in microservice communication pattern this is called as a synchronous communication where service one and service two are bound to a particular timeout. Okay, you have to respond within this boundary and protocol is simple HTTP and HTTPS underlying implementation can be anything. Next important part is asynchronous communication or messaging communications between two different services. So here we use AMQP protocol, right? In this case, so there are different protocols which are compatible. One example would be AMQP protocol. In this, uh, sender will use some kind of a code base, some kind of a code to send a message to SQS, SNS or any RabbitMQ, Kafka, whatever the messaging solution we have, right? Because this is most uh, reliable way of communication in the industry. Why? Because you send a message to the SQS, SQS will hold that message until unless there is a reliable delivery has happened. I mean the receiver has consumed it properly and send a call back. Okay, I have consumed it. Now you can delete that message or delete that event. Okay, so sender 1, I mean service 1 and service 2 and service 3. In this particular case, service 1, 2, 3 are uh, unaware of one another. This is called a loosely coupled uh, system or architecture here service one is just using some code code to code of chunk to send a message to either sns sqs or RabbitMQ. sns and sqs are provided by aws these are managed services you can also use simple RabbitMQ for your local development okay here you are sending a message and receiver will receive that message so there are two set of two type of communication is happening message communications and simple synchronous request reply this is also called as a fire and forget why? Because you triggered the message, uh, you will still get the routing ID, messaging ID and all, fire and forget in that sense, you will not receive the acknowledgement, your message is sent, now delivery will take, take, uh, take care of it. But in the, in the modern designs, you will get a routing ID, messaging ID or some system generated ID through which you can again query to service to what has happened to this particular message, have you received it, what has happened? Uh, what processing has been done after receiving that event okay normally microservice based application use system that combines multiple communication style most common style is single receiver communication which is synchronous communication synchronous protocol http https is most commonly used here you will have some kind of a api gateway okay not AWS, AWS API gateway, it can be anything else, APC or something, okay. Here you are talking to this service, this service may be talking to another service like this, okay. It can be APC, Kong or any other API gateway or simple you can also create your own API gateway. Okay, which will take care of uh, request validations, okay. These are the only authorized client, rate limiting threshold, all these uh, gateway levels task it can it can done it can also do service registry and service discovery okay so coming back to our communication styles it can be a single receiver or multiple receiver here it is a one to one communication and these are tightly coupled entities these are loosely coupled entities and you can use any of these solutions sqs sns you just uh, push the message to sns and sqs rest delivery will happen through the multiple services which are subscribing to it Similar kind of asynchronous communication happens with like publisher and subscriber mechanism, PubSub mechanism, which is known as like Redis PubSub. 
you send a message to the redis okay redis client redis client is sending and it will be published and then subscriber will listen to the to that message and they will be able to get what was the message okay so these are the different protocols are there okay http amqp and binary protocol is tcp is there which we will talk about okay the whole objective of these different communication is to to aware other service that something has happened in the asynchronous communication this is called as an event and this is called as a simple request okay so that's it about the request now we will start writing a basic node.js microservice we will adopt all based all best principles of writing a simple microservice using node.js express and typescript okay thanks everyone